Today our roads are full of crossover models, compact, family-sized SUV-style hatches that blend the practicality of the family five-door with the lifestyle looks of a 4x4. Now, Nissan didn't invent this concept, but they have done more than any other brand to perfect it, most notably with this car, the Qashqai. Now, this second-generation version has been rejuvenated, and we're going to test it. It's strange now to think what a gamble this model seemed to represent when the first generation version of this design was originally launched back in 2007. Suddenly, Nissan showrooms had no conventional focus class family hatch to offer browsing customers, just a curious but rather appealing looking contender offering something different, but not too different, to buyers bored with more familiar fare. They liked the lifestyle looks, the higher driving position, and the extra practicality and they were surprised to find few downsides in terms of running costs, driving dynamics and upfront asking prices. Quickly, the word got around and it was very soon clear that the Qashqai was going to succeed way beyond Nissan's wildest dreams. Initial plans for the brand Sunderland factory to produce around 100,000 units a year were quickly revised and doubled as this model line became the most successful in the company's European history and garnered over 80 different industry awards. By 2014, a handful of competitors had appeared to try to threaten this car's market dominance. So, so Nissan moved the game on again with the original version of this second generation design, which slotted into a crossover model lineup that by this time also included the brand's smaller Duke and its larger X-Trail models. Three years on, with every other mainstream brand piling into this sector, the Qashqai was still selling in prodigious numbers, with a total of 2.3 million sales on the board and a regular place amongst the top four best-selling cars of any kind in our market. Yet, Nissan knew that improvements were needed, primarily in quality and technology. So, that's what we've been given with this lightly facelifted, rejuvenated model, which gets extra luxury, uh, stronger standards of safety, and even the option of an autonomous driving aid. Will it all be enough, though, to keep this car in segment leadership? And is the original still the best? Well, that's what we're here to find out. If there's one thing that the original first-generation cash car model is remembered for, then it's the way that it uh, revolutionized the dynamic responses that keen drivers could expect from a car of this kind. Uh, now, not much has changed in that regard in the transition to this second-generation design, and the further small improvements added to this revised version by the Nissan engineering team in Cranford, in Bedfordshire, have kept this crossover SUV well-established as one of the on tarmac benchmark models in the class. Like all its like-minded rivals, this Nissan's aiming to offer everything people like about butch-looking SUVs in a more practical and affordable family hatch-shaped package. Uh, so you get the looks without any of the compromises that you'll not want to make if you never go off-road. Sure, curbs can be mounted, but you're going to need to leave the Serengeti to run off fines. Although, at the top of the range, there is still the option of four-wheel drive for muddy car parks or snowy driveways. At the wheel, it feels like a normal family hatch in which you simply sit a bit higher. Of course, trying to persuade any vehicle with the looks and demeanour of an SUV to drive like a car is no easy task. After all, conventional logic suggests that the taller you make a model of this kind, and this one is about 14 centimetres taller than a Golf or focus size family hatch, uh, the more it's going to roll. Still, Nissan's British Cranfield engineers clearly don't believe in conventional logic because this model manages to deliver its high stance and supple ride without taut responsive handling becoming a casualty in the process. A truly class leading hatch, uh, let's say a Ford Focus, is uh, still slightly better of course, but it can't offer this car's wider range of attributes and those are further improved with a number of really innovative features. Take active trace control. That's a system that works through the turns to counter both understeer and wheel spin by likely micro-braking whichever front wheel is threatening to lose grip. Uh, as a result, the car is kept planted through the tightest corner and you're really fired from bend to bend. 
Uh, while admiring this, uh, we would agree with most other commentators that these days this Japanese contender is slightly shaded in this area by its arch rival, say it's Attica, and that's mainly because the uh, steering here lacks that Spanish competitor's ultimate sense of uh, response and overall feel. To try and counter this threat, the Nissan's made a few minor dynamic changes in this revised model. Uh, they've stiffened the anti-roll bar by 16%, they've added a thicker steering shaft, and they've introduced an active return control system that's supposed to make uh, the steering wheel return to its centre position more naturally. Uh, in addition, as before, an almost unique feature that's offered by the Qashqai in this class is its dual-mode steering setup, and that's there to offer more enthusiastic drivers an extra selectable sport setting that weights up the electrically assisted rack. The changes made have certainly improved the dynamic driving experience on offer, although they still aren't quite enough to make this Qashqai feel as fun through a series of tight turns as a rival Attica. Where this Nissan compensates hugely though is in its provision of class leading standards of ride and refinement that have been further improved with this revised model. Let's start with the issue of ride quality, which in theory ought to be uh, compromised by the fairly crude suspension layout. It's a very basic torsion beam setup. Uh, the old Mark I model had a much more sophisticated multi-link rear system, but these days you only get that on the pricey four-wheel drive variant that only 5% of buyers choose. Fortunately, compensation comes in the form of a standard fit chassis control system that uses clever double piston dampers that have been retuned on this revised model to be as effective for high-speed highway driving as they are in soaking up bumps and potholes around town. Tarmac tears of this kind are also ironed away by a standard active ride control system that subtly dabs the brakes over bumps, uh, speed humps for example, that might otherwise cause the body to pitch about. Does it work? Well, in a word, yes. Uh, we've still not come across a better riding SUV crossover than this one, or a quieter one on the move. This time around, extra sound insulation has been added, plus there's additional ceiling around the front doors, and there's thicker rear door glass. As a result, this car is now class-leadingly quiet on the move. Let's finish with a look at engines and drivetrains. Many buyers will want the most affordable 1.3 litre DIGT petrol unit, which offers either 140 or 160 PS, the higher powered engine available with a 7-speed DCT auto gearbox as an alternative to the usual 6-speed manual. Even the base 140 PS power plant is a reasonably willing unit, capable of 62 miles an hour from rest in 10.5 seconds en route to 120 miles an hour. Figures that the 160 PS variant improves to 8.9 seconds and 124 miles an hour. Diesel folk meanwhile also have two engine choices and the option of manual or auto transmission. They can opt for a 1.5 litre DCI 115 variant, which isn't quite as quick as the equivalent base petrol unit. The diesel stats are 62 miles an hour from rest in 13 seconds en route to 114 miles an hour, but it has a bit more torque, 285 newton metres, so it can offer better mid-range pulling power. The other diesel available is a larger capacity 1.7 litre DCI 150 unit, which has 340 newton metres of torque, so will be a better towing choice, and it can deal with a 62 mile an hour sprint in 9.5 seconds, en route to 119 miles an hour. We should point out that, as before, you'll need to opt for that 1.7 litre DCI 150 power plant if you want this car fitted with four-wheel drive, Nissan's all-mode 4x4i all-wheel drive system being the same setup that's always been fitted to Qashqai models. Depending on your preference, this can be set in front-wheel drive, locked with drive split 50-50 to the front and the rear, or left in auto to shuttle torque backwards and forwards as required. It certainly doesn't make this crossover into any kind of off-roader, there's no significant ground clearance for a start, but it'd be nice to have in a snowy snap. Nissan says that the most dramatic enhancements made to this revised second generation Qashqai are to its exterior. Really? Well, our perspective is just as yours will probably be, that apart from the prominent new front grille, the other changes are pretty difficult to spot. Not that many were really needed. Uh, the sleek 
poised styling of this second generation design, a gym toned version of its predecessor, has proved to be one of the things that customers liked most about it. As I said, the key aesthetic change is the addition of the latest version of Nissan's distinctive V-Motion front grille, which frames a smarter corporate badge and cuts deeply down into the necessarily restyled bumper and incorporates these neat lower cutouts on either side. These sculpted stylized headlamps are new too, and they can feature full LED illumination on plusher models. Flowing into them is this redesigned clamshell bonnet that features sharp new creases on either side. Uh, those front end tweaks have slightly added to the overall length. It's up by 17 millimeters to nearly 4.4 meters, although that still leaves this Nissan about 150 mils shorter than pricier models in this segment, like Mazda CX-5, uh, Toyota's RAV4, and Honda CR-V. Other profile changes are primarily limited to a smarter portfolio of 17, 18 and 19 inch aerodynamically optimized alloy wheel designs. Uh, we've got the 18 inch two-tone rims here. At the rear, the revised tail lamps now get LEDs as standard, uh, plus there's a restyled bumper that from mid-level spec upwards incorporates these satin silver inserts that underline this Qashqai's SUV credentials. Uh, if the Nissan Connect infotainment system's been fitted, then there's this shark fin style roof antenna too. As usual though, of course, what's more important is the stuff that you can't see, namely in this case, the Renault-Nissan Alliance CMF or common module family platform uh, that has lightened this second generation model by 80 kilos and which currently underpins all models of this size from both brands. Time to take a seat inside where, as usual with any compact SUV or crossover, uh, you'll appreciate the slightly elevated driving position that makes such a difference with urban motoring. As for the update changes made to this revised model, well, as with the improvements to the exterior, these are pretty subtle, but they are possibly quite significant in terms of the day-to-day -day ownership experience this car can offer. Now, if you are familiar with the original version of this second generation design, uh, then the first thing that you're probably going to notice is this revised steering wheel. It's now slightly larger, it's a little smarter, and it's now fashioned with this flattened lower section to make getting in and out just that little bit easier. We'll continue the changes run down by telling you that the air vents and the exterior door handles get classier trimming and there is smarter stitching too on this centre console armrest. Plus, as before, getting comfortable is easy thanks to a good range of seat and wheel adjustment. Overall, the overriding impression is that everything you look at, touch and frequently use is just that little bit nicer than it was before. In addition, as ever, it's all been very decently screwed together by the British Sunderland factory. True, the finished results still won't give the prestige German brands any sleepless nights, but at the kind of prices being asked here, that was probably an unreasonable expectation. Avoid the two entry trim levels and you'll also find further updates. Now, firstly, the provision of these two much more comfortable monoform sports seats with their higher backs, uh, their extended bases and tapered shoulders. And secondly, this updated seven inch Nissan Connect center dash infotainment system, which now gets a slightly smarter user interface. As before, this incorporates a DAB tuner, navigation, Bluetooth and an around view monitor 360 degree camera package. But we are disappointed that Nissan hasn't taken the opportunity to add in the Apple CarPlay and the Android Auto smartphone mirroring systems that many rivals do now offer. In compensation, Nissan Connect can brief you on traffic information, fuel prices, flight times and the weather. Plus, uh, amongst other things, it can find you the most efficient route. It will score the green friendliness of your driving. Uh, it'll connect you into Facebook or offer you Google's point of interest search system. Now, there's also Google's send to car technology so that you can plan your route on your PC before you go and then forward those instructions onto the Qashqai. Uh, lesser models have to make do with a simpler 5-inch infotainment setup, although that does at least now incorporate a DAB tuner. 
The twin dial instrument layout you view through the three spoke leather trim steering wheel is simplicity itself uh, with much of what you need to know delivered by a clear classy color TFT display that's set between the speedo and the rev counter. Now this provides a wide range of information, um, everything from media and safety settings to a compass. Uh, practicalities have also been carefully considered. Uh, there's a decently sized glove box, uh, reasonably spacious door pockets, and this lidded center console box uh, between the seats incorporates a flip up top tray, lower CD box slots and 12 volt aux in and USB sockets. You also get extra compartments behind and in front of the gear lever, plus there's a couple of decently sized cup holders and they're extra deep so that bottles don't get in the way of your arm when you're changing gear. Now that is a sensible touch and another lies in the way that all the windows can now be operated remotely from the key fob and that helps if you're approaching the car and trying to cool the cabin quickly on a hot day. Are there things uh, that would change about this Qashqai? Well, not too many. Uh, we'd like to have seen an overhead sunglasses storage compartment and we continue to be slightly frustrated about the way the bonnet catch and the fuel filler cap releases are uh, positioned so closely together, low down out of sight, which leaves you groping about and inevitably pulling the wrong one. Our road test editor did that once in a filling station and ended up buying screen wash to try and make it look as if he'd done it on purpose. Um, our other uh, issue relates to over-the-shoulder visibility, and that's rather restricted, making it even more disappointing that the two most affordable trim levels don't come with rear parking sensors. So, time to take a look in the rear. Now, though the seats still don't slide or recline, they are positioned in a way that offers reasonable space for your legs. Now, that was arguably the most important change made as part of the transition to this second generation design. And that is something that Nissan has tried to further improve on in this revised model by providing these slimmer front seat backs with their scratch resistant plastic trim. Uh, we do still though notice a slight lack of under thigh support, and that suggests a design that's uh, intended for kids rather than adults. Practicality, now that is not a particular strong point. Although you do get uh, seat back mat pockets, the door pockets are rather small. Um, this storage cubby above the transmission tunnel will disgorge its contents the very first time you go around a bend. And this center armrest here with its integrated cup holders isn't fitted at all if you limit yourself to entry level trim. Shoulder room is adequate by class standards, although it's still not quite enough to make long distance carriage of three adults an especially comfortable experience. Uh, now, you might have some concerns about headroom given the lowish roof height, but in the event, this turns out to be pretty acceptable. Now, the one caveat to that comes in a top model like this one, fitted with a large panoramic glass roof. Now, although, as you'd expect, that gives the interior a light, airy feel, it does lower the ceiling height a little. And out back, well, another key change that was made in the transition between first and second generation Qashqai models uh, was the way that uh, Nissan was able to increase the size of the luggage bay. And these days that's rated at 430 litres. Now, lots of segment rivals can improve on that, but this Qashqai compensates with a boot area that's really very usable. Now, providing you avoid a base trim variant, you get this extremely useful luggage board system that's made up of two reversible floor panels uh, providing 16 possible configurations. Whether your need is to slide in a mountain bike over a flat floor or prevent the contents of your weekly shopping from spreading themselves all over the boot. Now to deal with that latter issue, uh, you'll want to uh, slot the board into the kind of vertical position uh, that will uh, give you an ideal space for carrying shopping bags. Uh, the board themselves, they feature a wipe clean surface on one side and soft carpet on the other. So this side is gonna be perfect for transporting muddy boots it's all dirty dogs. Uh, there are a few points that we would mention though. Um, although you do get bag hooks and small corner compartments on either side, complete with little elasticated straps, there's no 12 volt socket, uh, nor do you get a spare wheel, unless you pay extra or opt for pricey top spec trim. Now where that is fitted, the space saver spare takes up most of the room uh, beneath this boot floor, leaving just a little space in the center of the wheel rim. Uh, now you wouldn't even get that if you opt 
opted for a spare wheel and a model with the Bose stereo system fitted uh, because this subwoofer here will take up all the remaining room and reduce the total luggage capacity down to 401 litres. On the plus side, uh, at least that underfloor area has been designed to neatly store away the tonneau cover when it's not in use. Need more room? Well, if you do, there's unfortunately no option to add in a ski hatch or a 40-20-40 split for the rear seat back so that longer items could be pushed forward into the cabin without disturbing a couple of rear seated occupants. And while we're talking about the need to transport really long items, there's no fold forward front passenger seat option to help with that either. Perhaps more significant though is the fact that Nissan's neglected to add seat back release catches into the cargo area sidewalls. So if you do want to push forward the 60-40 split rack rest, uh, you either have to stretch right forwards or you have to open the rear doors to get at those seat top catches. Once the bench is flattened though, uh, 1,585 litres of total fresh air can be freed up, which is very competitive by class standards. So how much cash will you need to flash for this car? Well, the answer is a price starting from around £21,000 to one well over the £30,000 mark, which, as you'd expect, is class competitive for a family hatch based crossover of this kind. Almost all buyers choose between the two mainstream entry-level engines, a 1.3-litre DIGT 140 PS petrol variant or the frugal 1.5-litre DCI 115 PS diesel model we have here. Do your running cost sums carefully to determine whether it's really worth finding the premium necessary to graduate from petrol to diesel power, typically around £1,600. For low mileage, town-based families, it may not be. Buyers prepared to progress to one of the mid or upper spec trim levels will also be offered the chance to spend £1,300 to £1,400 more to get themselves a pokier petrol or diesel option. If you prefer petrol, you'll be able to upgrade into a 160 PS version of the 1.3 litre DIGT unit, which comes with the option of auto transmission. An auto box is also an option for diesel folk wanting the company's familiar 1.7 litre DCI 150 power plant, which is the engine you'll need in this Nissan if you're one of the tiny proportion of likely buyers who want their cars equipped with the option of four wheel drive. Nissan knows its market and it realises that a high level of standard spec is necessary to satisfy it. Which is why if you decide a Qashqai is what you and your family really needs, then you'll find that every model comes pretty decently kitted out. You'll be wanting air conditioning, uh, Bluetooth for your phone, and obviously basics like LED daytime running lights, uh, powered windows, heated electric mirrors, uh, a height adjustable driver's seat, a trip computer, an alarm, and hill start assist to stop you drifting uh, backwards and uphill junctions. Perhaps also cruise control with a speed limiter. All that's included, as is a five inch color TFT infotainment screen and a reasonable quality steering wheel controlled DAB stereo with a USB. USB port and an aux in socket. Having said that though, we would suggest that you try to avoid the base Vizier spec models. Uh, they lack a couple of key Qashqai features. Uh, the useful 16-way adjustable luggage board system in the boot and the intelligent trace control and intelligent ride control systems that really perfect the on-tarmac drive dynamics. Find a little extra to stretch to the next step up the trim tree, uh, Accenta, and all of that comes included along with 17-inch alloy wheels, power folding mirrors, uh, auto headlamps and wipers, front fog lights, climate control, leather for the steering wheel and the gear stick, a rear central armrest, driver's seat lumbar support and an audio system that gets upgraded from four to six speakers. Most Qashqai customers though tend to opt for the mid-range end connector trim that we're trying here. That's the spec level you'll need if you want your Qashqai to look like the ones pictured in the brochure. Uh, end connector additions like roof rails, silver rear skid plates, uh, rear privacy glass and larger 18 inch two-tone alloy wheels make a real difference to the outside aesthetics. And the same is true in the cabin where anthracite cloth trimmed sports seats and carbon effect dashboard trim lift the ambiance quite a bit. 
Uh, there's also a larger 7-inch Center Dash infotainment touchscreen, and that is complete with navigation and a 360-degree around-view monitor camera system. Plus, uh, you also get keyless entry, all-round parking sensors, and a smart vision pack that gives you a range of extra camera-driven safety features. I'm going to cover those in a moment. We're not sure that you'll really need much more than that, but if you absolutely do, then the top spec Techna variants await. Uh, the standard Techna models add full LED headlights with auto leveling, larger 19 inch wheels, a heated windscreen, uh, a premium eight speaker Bose audio system, an intelligent park assist system, which will steer you into spaces, an even more comprehensive package of camera driven safety features, plus part leather seats that are heated up front and power adjustable for the driver. Top Techna Plus variants add to that with full Napa leather upholstery uh, that's quilted and a panoramic glass roof. On to options. Now, as you'd expect, many of the features fitted to plusher variants can be added as extras if you buy in further down the range. So, for example, with affordable Accenta trim, many buyers add in a tech pack that gives them the bigger 7-inch infotainment touchscreen with navigation and the surround camera system. And also a heat pack that provides heat for the front seats and also for the windscreen. Popular options amongst buyers of this mid-range end connector model, well, they include the panoramic glass roof that we have here, part leather trim, and the full LED headlights. What else? Um, aesthetics. Well, there's a wide range of metallic or pearlescent paint finishes, uh, plus illuminated side styling bars and some smart alloy wheel rim options. Uh, a crossover pack adds front and rear styling plates, while a design pack adds smart finishes to the front and rear bumpers. As for practicalities, well, uh, unless you opt for Techna trim, you'll need to pay extra for a space saver spare wheel. Uh, you might also want crossbars for the roof rails. On to safety. Now, bear in mind that if you opt for the two base trim levels, Vizier and Accenta, you'll have to pay extra for the really clever camera-driven safety features that buyers are now starting to expect in this segment. Uh, you can add these in courtesy of an additional smart vision pack uh, that comes as standard from end connector trim upwards. Uh, the key element of that is Nissan's intelligent emergency braking system. Now, that is one of those setups that scans the road ahead as you drive in search of potential accident hazards. Um, if the forward-facing camera and radar combination detect something, you'll be warned. And if you don't respond, or well, perhaps you aren't able to, then the brakes will automatically be applied to decrease the severity of any resulting accident. Um, now, for this revised model, this package also includes a pedestrian recognition element, and that will specifically focus on people who might be about to step out into your path. Um, other smart vision pack inclusions run to lane departure warning and traffic sign recognition. If you want more, you'll have to upgrade to one of the Techno models that come with Nissan's Safety Shield Plus package. Now here you get four further camera driven features blind spot warning that'll alert you to the danger of a potential collision when you're changing lanes, intelligent driver alert, now that will monitor your driving reactions for signs of drowsiness, rear cross traffic alert, now that warns you of oncoming vehicles when you're reversing out of a space, and a moving object detection system. Now this works as part of the surround view camera system and alerts you to movement around the vehicle uh, when you're stationary or when uh, you're at parking speeds, so say children or dogs that you haven't seen. Even without all this gadgetry fitted, the Qashqai can be classified as a very safe place to put your family, according at least to Euro NCAP, who gave it a top five-star rating in their tests, remarking that it performed particularly well in delivering the best possible levels of protection for children. Uh, in the organization's dynamic child occupant tests, uh, this Nissan scored maximum points for its protection of an 18-month-old infant. Uh, it also did notably well in pedestrian safety and side impact protection. All models get twin front side and curtain airbags, uh, plus ISOFIX child seat fastenings and tyre pressure monitoring, as well as the usual electronic aids for braking, traction and stability control. 
Finally, a word about the future, which, as we're all beginning to realise, will be very much based around various elements of fully autonomous driving. Now, with this revised cash car model, Nissan's taken a step towards that with a clever pro-pilot system uh, that can be added to top-spec models. It's intended for use when you're on a single-lane highway and you want the car to almost completely control steering, acceleration and braking, either in times of heavy traffic congestion or during high-speed cruising. All the driver has to do is press a steering wheel button and pro-pilot will automatically activate three systems, LKA, Lane Keep Assist, ICC, Intelligent Cruise Control, and TJP, Traffic Jam Pilot. These, when working together, will pretty much allow the car to drive itself. We'll start by giving you the key WLTP rated fuel and CO2 figures you'll need. The base 1.3 DIGT petrol 140 PS model manages 41.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 154 grams per kilometre of CO2. The 1.3 DIGT 160 variant manages up to 40.9 miles to the gallon and 161 grams per kilometre in front driven manual form. The 1.5 litre DCI diesel variant remains a standard setter for WLTP efficiency in this segment, managing up to 51.4 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and up to 139 grams per kilometre of CO2 in front driven manual form. For the DCI 150, the figures are 50.1 miles to the gallon on the combined cycle and 150 grams per kilometre in front driven manual form. But that drops quite a bit if you specify four wheel drive. The DCI 150 four-wheel drive auto model manages up to 40.9 miles to the gallon and up to 182 grams per kilometer. In running this car, you'll also save in other areas too. Take residuals. Uh, cash code depreciation levels have improved by 10% since the original introduction of this second generation model, which means that after the standard three year, 30,000 mile period, industry experts cap reckon that a typical 1.5 litre DCI 110 Techna trimmed cash car model will be worth £10,900, which is 39% of its original value. Tax levels will be low too, opt for that 1.5 litre DCI diesel variant and you'll pay nothing in vehicle excise duty and you'll see yourself in a low 14% uh, benefiting kind company car tax ban too. Insurance groupings are also affordable. Uh, for the two mainstream engines, the 1.2 litre petrol and the 1.5 litre diesel, you're looking at Group 16E for base models, although that grouping will become more affordable if you're able to buy into one of the upper spec variants with their camera-driven safety features. Uh, this 1.5 DCI N connector variant, for example, is rated at Group 14E. Obviously, the more powerful engines will cost a little more to insure. Uh, the 1.6 litre DIG GT petrol models are rated at either group 19E or 20E and the DCI 130 variants are rated at either group 17E, 18E or 19E. What about other running cost issues? Well, the brand offers fixed price servicing and service intervals for the petrol engines come round every 12 months or 12,500 miles, whichever comes soonest. Uh, for the turbo diesel motor, the one year period remains the same, but you can travel up to 18,000 miles between scheduled stops before any maintenance is going to be required. Now, as part of any Nissan dealer visit, uh, you'll be provided with a free courtesy vehicle and a video health check for your cash car that you can watch on your phone or your computer. Nissan also provides a three-year 60,000 mile warranty as standard and that can be lengthened to four years but with the same mileage cap. Now this recognises that most crossover drivers tend to cover lower distances but it aims to give added peace of mind for those who are looking to keep their car for longer. And in case of any problems there's breakdown assistance with roadside help included with the car's protection package. Building a crossover vehicle is easy. Building one as good as this Qashqai is a whole lot tougher, as competitors have found. Renault copied almost everything with their rival Kajar model and still didn't quite manage it. Say it's Attica has got closer, but still gets nowhere near this car's sales figures. 
Nissan didn't have to do a whole lot to keep this second generation design current and it hasn't but the changes made should be enough to keep this car ahead of most models in the chasing pack. Uh, it's slightly smarter to look at, it's a little nicer to sit in and the safety technology is now bang up to date. It's all enough to ensure that this, the original family crossover model, will continue to represent a fine option for buyers who'd rather not be saddled with run-of-the-mill hatches and people carriers and who don't want the clunkiness and the cost that's common even to some smaller SUVs. Disappointments are few. Um, maybe the high price of four-wheel drive, uh, the absence of sophisticated smartphone mirroring systems and the slightly restricted rearward visibility, that's about it. Against that though, there's so much we like. Uh, the top-notch efficiency, the appealing looks and the significant improvements made to the handling and ride by the clever intelligent trace control and intelligent ride control systems. In summary then, this remains a car from a brand that clearly knows its market. It's still a benchmark and it's still a starting point for anyone buying in this segment.